Morning everyone. So today I'm going to take out one of the valve springs in my coupe. I want to test the seat pressure and the open pressure and in order to do that I went ahead and bought one of these mini valve spring testers from Proform, so part number 6841. So we'll take a valve spring out and we'll see uh, if this unit works. So this is what it looks like um, and it's got the height adjuster in it so you can adjust your uh, your installed height fairly easy so we'll give it a go so you can see here I've taken the valve cover off now for cylinder 7 you can see I've backed the two set screws out, so I'm going to take those uh, poly locks off and remove the rockers so I can take the spring out. I'll probably take the intake spring on cylinder 7 out. So you can see here the roller rockers look like they're in good shape. Um, there's no excessive wear, which is great. That's exactly what you want. Um, sometimes if the uh, push rods are too long or the valve jump geometry is off, you get a bit of a wear mark up here. Um, but they look like they're in good condition. Now, we've taken the rockers off, so in order to make sure that the valve doesn't drop when we take the valve spring off, what I do is I use a compressor and I just mock up this little doohickey. So this is from a compression tester and I've just put a double hose clamp on the end here because this fitting isn't Ryko, JMEC or Nitto. It's just a fitting that goes into the end of this compression tester so you can't actually buy a hose fitting. I'm sure you can but I can't find one. So I've just put a, a standard 10 mil air hose over this fitting and then this is a 14 mil fitting which goes into a Cleveland spark plug head and I'll put that in, turn the air compressor on, put it up to about 100 psi and that's just to make sure that the valve doesn't drop when I take the valve spring out. If the valve drops you got to take the, the heads off and redo intake gaskets, head gaskets, so you really need to make sure that you have everything prepared and it goes right because uh, one little mistake and it can cause you a couple of days work. So I just plug this little fitting so this is a, a Nitto um, male into a, what do you call it, a threaded female. That goes in the end of the hose line, so plug this in. Turn the air compressor on. Right, so this is connected now. You can hear the air bleeding down, so I don't screw it in too tight. It's got a little O-ring on the end. So some air will escape, but the reason I don't put it too tight is because it's hard to get out. So there's my airline fitting, and I've got it set on about 110 psi at the moment. 
110 psi. And the reason being, normally everything I operate is on 90, but I just want it to, if it's bleeding down, to kick in a little bit earlier, so probably bleed down to about 90, and then the compressor will kick in again. And this is my valve spring removal tool. I find this the easiest one to use. I've got a couple of others, but what I've had to do is just weld a back plate onto this because it spreads very easy. Uh, I do want to get a stud mount valve spring remover, which apparently are really easy. I think um, Proform and Morosso sell them, but this is just as effective. It just takes a little bit more time. So we've got our VF spring, our retainer, collar and keeper, so just taking them out with a magnet. So now we're going to use this new tool to test the spring pressure. So you can see here on the micrometer we can set our spring installed height just by adjusting it out. So the minimum is 1.5 inches, but if you wind it out, we can set it all the way to the desired height. So for me, that's 1.9 inches. So I'll go out. So 1.7, 8, and we've got 1.9. So very simple to do, and then when you actually put it into the vise or the hydraulic press, um, this part pushes down and you want to back it off a little bit and then just slowly turn it until you feel resistance and what I do is just get it on the, the zero and that means that it's not pushing down on the actual tester itself. It's measuring the actual installed height. So hopefully that focuses all right. So these are my valve springs, just printed out the spec sheets. It's a dual valve spring from CompCam to suit my cam. So what I'm looking for is, first of all, the installed height is 1.9 inches. I don't know if you can see that. And then the seat pressure is 153. So that's what I'm gonna test first. And then the spring rate, so what I'm going to do is take 1.9 inches minus my valve lift which is 0 0.560 which makes it 1.34 inches. So I will test that with the spring tester and see whether it comes up at 354. So let's give it a go. So as you can see, what you do is you press it down um, just until you've got uh, just a little bit of play because you don't want it to press up against the actual spring tester um, and that's right on the edge so we can see that the scales there read about 150 155 I think. Now if I go back over to my specs. So the seat pressure is 153. So bang on. Alright, so now I've measured my installed height. I'm gonna set the micrometer to 1.5 inches 
that's the uh, lower setting it goes and then I want to measure my spring pressure at max valve lift so my cam the valve lift is 0.56 inches so I'm going to do my installed height 1.9 minus my valve lift which is 0 0.560 equals 1.34 inches this is set at 1.5 so I need to do 1.5 take 1.34 which gives me 0 0.160 so I've got these shims I've measured with this measurer so these together are exactly 0 0.160 so what I'm going to do is put these under the spring and then grab my tool put this on set that underneath and then I will press this down and measure it with no slack roughly 3, 10, 20, so still within spec for my cam but not um, exactly uh, exactly what it is on the sheet so we've got here spring rate is 354 and I've got about 3.30 so what I'll do is I'll measure some other springs just to see whether I get equal measurements but still okay for the cam and as far as this tester I'm actually quite impressed by that it's, it's easy to use you could do exactly the same thing in a vise And is it accurate? I think it is. So there you go. Proform Mini Spring Tester. Thumbs up. So this is the spring compressor. I'm about to put the spring back in. So just so you can see how it hooks on. Just got to make sure that it fits right because I have had those release and yeah, a bit dodgy but make sure that you don't uh, press the dampener because sometimes it can hook into the, the actual dampener and probably not good for the dampener but I'm going to put this back in tested some other springs and they're all within 5% so I think that's the tolerance for valve springs as far as the <laughs> alright so there you have it so as far as the valve springs it was 5% tolerance, so they're all within spec for the cam. The mini spring tester, so this is a Proform mini spring tester with a micrometer. Um, I'm impressed with it 
for what it is, uh, makes it easy to test your valve spring pressures. So the part number is 66841 and it goes up to 600 pounds. So it has a micrometer which goes from 1.5 inches to 2.295. So for most applications that would be sufficient. I would uh, recommend using it. I think it's an easy way to test your valve springs. The other way is just take your valve springs to a shop. I have had a look at a couple of other clips and people have got some bathroom scales that go up to 300 pounds and put them in vices and presses. So I guess that's another way you could do it. I don't know how accurate it is. But as far as this, I think it's quite good. So what I'm gonna do next is I wanna have a look at the valve train geometry. So making sure that my guides are lined up and then I think we will do the fuel pressure regulator. So I'm going to remount that and then paint where it's obviously leaked down on the shock tower. So I'll rub that back and paint it in another video. Stay tuned.